Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of No Prize Podcast. We're doing it down and dirty with your boy, Hetlands, and the illustrious, the fantastic, the only person that can make me sound like I know what I'm talking about, Johnny. <laughs> How's it going, Johnny? It's going well, man. How are you? How are you? Um, um, man, it's been an interesting week across the board for comics. Um, I do want to give a shout out to our boys down in Orlando. God bless their hearts for soldiering down there um, and, and braving the masses um, as we're doing a, another dirty pandemic. Um, they're down there. We got uh, Al, um, Al Mega down there, and we also got uh, Blind Adam. Blind yeah. Adam, he's, he's cooking up something. Trying to, he's out there uh, you know, hunting down for the next Mrs. Adam down there, I guess. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but, uh, man, it's, it, it's been interesting. I've, I've gotten some interesting feedback from everybody down there so far. And, and But we'll see if they bring us back any, any trinkets and treats. You know? Well, I think we deserve some, don't we? If we're holding the fort, I think, I think it's only fair that you know we get some uh, cheddar cheese. You would you would think so, man. You would think so, but we, you know, they 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 don't they don't give a damn about us. They're down there in Orlando in the sun. You know. yeah. Suff- yeah, suffering, suffering, suffering. Yeah, suffering. For, you know, stuff. Yeah, come yeah. on, man. Like, come on. Yeah. No, yeah. No. And then they say, oh, well, why didn't you come down here, Chelsea? Just because I got kids, man. Kids are in school, man. They can't just pick up like. Hey, what, what kind of teacher? What kind of excuse gonna get into the teacher? Going to a comic con? Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. My kids, my kids, kids couldn't come in today. They were too busy dressed up like Captain America. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on, that's that, that's not going to fly. That's not. <laughs> and and what am I going to give? You know, some of us got actual jobs. Want to say, uh, sir, I can't come into work today because I gotta go dress up as uh, Doc Ock or or you know Black Panther. You no, know, for about three days. Not nah, not nah, that's not going to fly. You know. Well, no, it's, well, it's for me. It's like, do I spend my money going to Mexico for eleven days, or do I go to Comic Con in Florida in non-football season? By the way, you know, so there's no mm. Miami Dolphins to do or anything like that. So yeah, I, it I'll sounds keep, like keep, an easy decision to me. I'll keep Mrs. H sweet, and we'll go to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Man, everybody's talking about uh carnivals nowadays, man. Mm-hmm. Freaking the carnivals are the thing to do. But even even then, man, freaking look, it's summertime. Gotta save up my money for the movies, man, because it's gonna be blockbuster season. There's a lot of blockbusters that are supposed to be coming out, but the blockbuster that we're having to deal with and we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about uh you know Doctor Strange. <laughs> I finally saw it. I saw it last weekend. Madness. So you finally I saw, saw it. It. Okay. Yes. All right, all right. Well, we're yeah. going to talk about it, man. Woo-hoo. Good. Here's uh, cool. me. look. I saw it a couple weeks ago, man, mm-hmm. and uh, I have very mixed feelings about it. From either, hey, this part really, really sucks. To this part was really, really good. It's for me. It was a tale of two movies. Um, it was like either that you could see Sam Raimi's heavy influence, and then some of it was like, where are they coming from? Where are they mm. coming? this from what are they trying to do here man so let me let me let me let you go ahead and and talk to you. what did, what did you think well we're we're a house divided on this movie over here in Hughesville um I'm not a big fan of it at all and yet my wife thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it so there you go for me I agree with you a little bit here there is a Sam a huge Sam Raimi vibe throughout the movie um which I think it's watered down by the need to sell action figures and have kids see this movie. Over right, here, right. it's written for 12 years, so that means any kid can go to see this movie as long as they're accompanied by an adult. Now, mm. there are some scary bits in, like with the corpse, the, the cloak of corpses, for example, when he's a uh, zombie stranger's doing his thing. Um, and when Wanda comes out of the, the, the reflection which is like pure horror tropes. I would have liked to have knocked up the rating of the movie a little bit so we could mm. have seen more of that right. rather than yeah, have yeah. to deal with like the the, the kid-friendly elements and stuff. Um, sure. I think some of the introduction of the characters were a bit lame or I think if you've got a character that can destroy someone by speaking, you don't spend two minutes 
talking about it. You just rock up and say something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's you know what I'm saying? That's yeah? true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this person's great. superpower is the ability to, and you're like, uh, why are you telling the bad guy that when the bad guy can do something about it? Why exactly. Just, you, know? you just show it. Yeah, you, do it. You just show it. Yeah, just do I, it. Right. I did like the, um, I did like the astral plane stuff. I thought that was good. I think that was taken like directly out of the comics. The way that like the astral plane is just white with like the focus of the little broken building down. But I think my biggest complaint is this isn't a Doctor Strange sequel. This is a One Division sequel. Yeah, absolutely. And I think. The only reason they tagged it as Doctor Strange is so that more people will go and see it. And I, I've got a question. I, I, I must have missed something. I don't know what I've missed. When did Doctor Strange lose his um, Source of Supreme title? So when he disappeared. Oh, right. When, right. He, well, when he, Yeah, when he disappeared, right. he still had to have a Sorcerer Supreme. All right, okay. So, yeah. yeah. Does he not reclaim it when he come, comes back then? You got to have a battle for it. <laughs> oh, okay. You gotta have a battle for it. I didn't even thought the, of that, to be fair. Right, and the the three gods, right, that he derives his power from, they have to come to come back to him. And say, well, here you go. Mm. Um, but that never that never happened. So, um, I mean, it's not just about you know hanging out in the in the tower. You know, <laughs> you gotta you gotta like you saw Wong. He he's he has to administer to different um monks and different areas and different mm. locations so you know you can't be doing all that i'm going to disappear and never to be seen type of stuff yeah. you know yeah, fair enough. So you gotta yeah so, so I, I think it was fair i think I, I never even it never even occurred to me that wong stayed i always assumed that Wong disappeared with him i don't know why that was because yeah i mean it was such a, a big breaking thing right no we and we yeah. always speculated like who disappeared who didn't who stayed who didn't stay you know it's it, it, sometimes in some of these other like little breakaway shows i wish they would really go into it like hey when everybody disappeared where yeah. were you yeah what happened I, to you i can't remember ever being expressly said that Wong stayed and maybe i missed i mean if i missed it, i missed it you know um but hey ho. Well, I thought. Right. I, uh, but but it, it's it's great because you got to remember there was a big hoo ha about the fact that the first sorcerer supreme I forget what her name was. Um, there was a big hoo ha over it over having this old white lady as the super sorcerer supreme. Right. Um. So you no, know, turning it over to Wong for a little bit. I'm I'm okay with that. You know, just to calm everybody down. Right? Yeah. I don't. I don't have. I will say this. I don't have a problem with Wong being the Sorcerer Supreme. It was just a, a, a plot point that I was like, oh, I didn't know when that. Did that happened. happened. Yeah. 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 So I was just kind of curious. Yeah. So. I, I I do like the fact that uh, finally we get to see the other locations because you know what the Sorcerer Supreme really is like the Pope, right? <laughs> he's not just. He's not just. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I got this church, and then I've got this cult of, inside this one church. No, he's got several temples. Around the world, that they got to freaking go out and freaking, and I think that's an elephant, the element that we're missing that when yeah. we forget about who Doc Strange, yeah, is yeah. as the source of the supreme, right? And yeah. even in the strange book that they're comic book that they're doing now, they're missing that element. They went to the, oh, he's helping this little old lady across the street, which mm -hmm. is cool, but you gotta, you gotta. In order for me to understand like how big that is, you got to show me the other locations, right? Yeah. I know there's like seven or eight other locations that he administers to, but mm -hmm. you say, okay, one day this is what he does. He goes to this location, this location, this location, this location, and then at the end of the day, right before he puts his head bed bed to sleep, he goes out. He goes to talk to Maria, mm -hmm. gives her some cookies, and then that that would make a bigger impact. Mm -hmm. But once again. They gotta, they gotta, and I think they're trying. I think Kevin Feige he said they're trying mm. to make sure that the the books and the movies, the TV series are are more in, in line and everything. And they've got some uh, great ideas. They just gotta make it we can pair up. You know? Yeah, uh, it is a good idea, you know. And I think there is a level of synergy that if you're using movies as a way to improve sales on comic books, it definitely needs to happen. Um, which makes a mockery of the fact that the current Strange book 
Doctor Strange isn't even in the damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but, you well, know, you I, know, like you, 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 I mean, look, you saw that where they were going with this, right? You, you mm. talked about Black Bolt. Well, it wasn't just Black Bolt. You know, they had Charles Xavier in there. They had Reed Richards in there finally. Um, you know, Reed was we crazy. had. Like yeah, we it. had we had a Captain Marvel, but not mm-hmm. the one we were we were thinking about. Um, and I forget who else. Uh, oh yeah, yeah Captain, Carter Captain Carter. Captain yeah. Carter in there. That was that was right. So it it was a it was a it was a good hey, this is where we might be going. Well, do you like it or do you like us? And, and this yes, and no. this is another great point you're bringing up, Lucas. Because I mean, for to enjoy this movie, you will have had to have watched all of One Division. And at least several episodes of um, the What If cartoon show. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. that's that's a lot of watching going on for a movie that pertains to be a Doctor Strange sequel, right? Yeah. Well, you know what? So when I was in the theater, um, the because nah, that's what I always listen for is I listen I listen for gasps and I listen mm-hmm. for you no know, applauses, and the biggest applause was for Reed Richards, right? Yeah, who hasn't had um, who hasn't had a TV series yet or anything else? He, he's had a comic book, but the comic book has kind of sucked. Kind of sucked. It's good the professor's not here to hear you say that. Yeah, kind of sucked. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's it's tough, right? So, yeah, I mean, I'll give it. I'll give it the, the present storyline. I'll give it the present storyline. The present storyline is kind of okay, but I don't think people are tracking like what's going on with that. So. I, I, I look. I don't look. Let's 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 uh, let me put it on the table. Nobody's reading Fantastic Four right now, except for us. Well, yeah, I know for a fact. I, yeah, I I'll, for I'll a fact. give you that. I'll give you that. Specu- yeah. yeah, speculators. Once again, speculators are the ones that kind of crack open a book to see who was in it, and they are not cracking open Fantastic Four right now. Mm-hmm. So, um, so if they're not reading it, I don't know anybody else who is right now. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, well, so what did you think of the new actress uh, who played America Chavez? Um, I thought she was all right. I thought the I thought the America Chavez character was, um, she was depowered a lot, considering she's supposed to be like super strong, super fast, and vulnerable, and all that sort of stuff. Um, she's a bit of a MacGuffin. You know, she's a bit of a reset button all the time. Um, nice. It's it's good to see that she's she's actually transcended that in the comic books. She's better than that, uh, but here she was just she's just a means to an end. Um, and you kind of got to think her existence is a little bit pointless if you can dream walk using the dark hall book. Mm. So if I can dream walk, why do I need a, a person to be able to go through the unit the multiverse? I'm not quite sure how why there would be a need for that. It seems a bit redundant to me. Maybe I'm missing a point. I don't know. But and both Wonder and Strange use the whole dreamwalking technique to move into a universe. All all that Chavez does is manage to transport you there, like physically transport you there. Right, right. Um, right, right. So if I can dreamwalk there and have such a huge impact as Wonder and um, Strange did. Then, what do I need Chavez for, really? Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, look. I mean, fully the whole. Well, I mean, fully the whole big thing about her is supposed to be, hey, let's bring some new blood in because we can't lean into Peter Parker forever to be yeah. the new blood in the universe, right? So, hey, let's inject some new blood. I thought she was. All, I, did, I thought she was all right. I didn't. You know, I didn't think. Oh my god, terrible. You know, I just. I didn't see the point of a power set. That's all. To be from that point of view. Mm. Well, I mean, so right now, I, there aren't many. Even in the comics, there aren't that really big storylines that she's a part of or that she owns right now. Mm. Like maybe like the Ultimates two, but then there was like thirty other characters that were a big part of that to include Galactus. Okay. Um, like you're right when it comes to her power set, you know. Kevin Feige, he's talked about, hey, they're messing around with Kamala Khan's power set. They're talking yeah, about- I don't understand why they're doing that. I don't understand why they're messing around. If you've got a character, and, and on one hand, you're saying, to, you're saying to the guy, to the crowds, we want the movies and the books to be 
co connected somehow. We want them to be consistency between the two. And then you go and create a Miss Marvel TV show and she doesn't even have the same powers. I don't know. Well, I, don't well, know. I mean, what's I going know. on? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they're going for, through, man. But, but you know, look, this movie is making what three hundred million dollars so far, uh, or three hundred fifty. Mm. It's close to five hundred million, which is what they needed. They gotta whatever they make, they gotta make it before the beginning of next week because after that, whatever goes to the theaters goes straight to the theaters. They stop. They start losing some money mm. off of this one. Um, um, June twenty second is the Disney Plus date, isn't it? Is, did I see that is somewhere? It, is it? I, I think so. Is it? Because because I know they just recently, maybe it was this past week, where the CEO came out and started talking about a lot of the uh, stuff that's coming out. Confirmed, hey, Chip and Ch Chip and Dale, Power Rangers talked about Obi Wan, talked about the She Hulk, and well, let, let me let, let's get into that real quick. What did yeah, you think it. of the She Hulk trailer? Um, you know. Well, every, yeah, I've, so I've seen it. Yeah, I've just confirmed June twenty second on Disney Plus. There you go for Doctor Strange. Um, right, okay. So She Hulk, the, it's a fun character. She's supposed to be fun. Tongue is supposed to be firmly planted in the cheek. It's not going to be a super serious um, superhero book with lots of um, uh, gravitas. It's supposed to be light hearted. That doesn't mean we have to deal with shoddy CGI. So some of the CGI looks terrible. It looks awful. Um, how it plays out for the rest of the show, I don't know. But I hopefully they'll tighten up the CGI because some of it. When she's like doing like the normal things like walking around and it's like, oh, no, it's, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work for me at all. Um, I thought some of the CGI in, Captain, sorry, in, in Doctor Strange was bad, um, to be honest, but no, um, I'll be watching it. I think I'll be watching it because you know it's it's a it can be a fun book, a, a fun show. And we've had lots of serious stuff recently, so I'd like to see a yeah. change of pace. But Ali McBeal does the Hulk. I'm not quite sure. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean her her big she has quite a few big storylines that she can lead us into. I love it. Um, to include the Secret Wars. Um, so I would love them to lead, but the thing is, what they've shown us so far is that it's going to be very, very serious. Which is like, eh. So maybe they'll get everybody to like her in this one, and then maybe in, the, in the season two, that's when they'll start to pry it apart. Um, mm. And and because you know, in the meanwhile, in the meantime, they still got to get Miles Morales somehow into this whole deal. Um, so and. You know, I, I, I don't, I, I really didn't care about the CGI. I, I, I'm in these TV series. I'm not expect, expecting, um, you know, big movie level CGI, man. I, I'm uh, expecting the actors to give us big freaking, you know, whopping huge ass freaking deals. Um, well, you say that, but I mean, the CGI has to work, or else you lose all, all sort of ideas for it. Because I mean, I. I tried watching my, uh, Moon Knight again, um, and I just can't do it. I, well, the, the way the cape moves, it just dis distracts my eye. It, it just doesn't, for me, it just doesn't work. It's, it's no. Um, I mean, I, I keep persevering because people are telling me it's a great show and I should be watching it, but Why? I don't know. I don't Why? Know. It wasn't even a great storyline. <laughs> well, people tell me, was... oh, yeah, it's great, but... I'm kind of, you know, I'm, no, I'm, if I, if my wife, no, makes, no. if my, if I watch it with my wife, if that's one thing, but if I'm not, I don't know, the CGI just looks terrible. Yeah, think, Moon Knight season one was a handbook onto how the Moon Knight universe works. That's it. Is no, there was no absolutely great acting. There was no great CGI. There was nothing, not even great music, which is usually something that, Marvel really does it gets there is no great vibe. Mm. So maybe if there's a season two, they can tie out I mean like kind of button those things up. And but once again, Moon Knight was not good. It wasn't I mean it wasn't it wasn't absolutely hundred percent terrible. I liked all the elements that they decided to go into, right? Mm -hmm. Um it was very unusual. And the fact that they decided to explain everything and how his God works and everything. So 
I like that, but it was very unusual that they decided to go with that first. Mm. I thought that would have been more of a thing for a season two. Mm-hmm. Um, and they say, hey, you know how he went crazy and all that? This is why he went crazy and we can just killing everybody all the time. Or maybe towards the last second episode and then then we can go fully into the all the other egyptian gods uh yeah. so and that's what i'm scared of with she hulk is that they're going to freaking go off and say hey you see how she's green this is why she's green and you know you can go into the whole big thing explaining it. like no i don't need i need to know who she is i need to care about <laughs> yeah, yeah. So shout shout yeah definitely i need to care about who she is and then when you start to tell me Hey, she got radiated by gamma rays. Then I'm like, oh man, really? That's that's freaked up. Otherwise, going like, oh, she got radiated by a gamma ray. Well, no, that's us every day. That's America. You know, it, it's that's that's something that uh, in some of these Disney shows that they've slowly been not being able to do. Um, like, so for instance, I think they tried to do that in the uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, joint right. They tried to like, oh man. Sam, he's out there freaking trying to fight for, you know, you know, fight for America. But in the meantime, when he goes home, he can fairly afford, you know, to pay the payments on his sister's boat. Yeah. Uh, look, I, the average American doesn't have that same, did not have that same experience. Yeah. However, if you would have said, hey, here's his sister's house. Mm-hmm. And she's about to lose the house because of yada, yada, yada. Damn yeah. people, especially now with everything going on economically, people would have maybe have gotten gotten mm-hmm. more into that. But no, then you took every, then you took them over to you know to Ukraine and Russia and Europe and all seas and every sea. You know, it's just once again freaking Disney needs to get back to that thing of st- stop explaining to us right away of how it all works. Get mm-hmm. us to get us to care about the character that we're going on a ride with. Then slowly lay it out, and you don't have mm-hmm. to do it all in the season one. Do it yeah. if I really if before season one, if I really want to know, then I'll just go. Because in fact, I had a friend who told me last week who said after Moon Knight episode one, it was good enough to make him say, "Okay, I want to know more about more about Moon Knight." So I went, mm-hmm. so he went to the comics to figure out what was going on, and unfortunately, Moon Knight, uh, <laughs> the Moon Knight uh, comic book was on another freaking stint it was yeah, like a yeah. whole like another thing so and that's that's my other complaint about marvel right now is like okay you've got a tv series out there right you've got a you've got a you've got a comic or you've got a, a movie going on right you need to have a base one annual or something out there that when they go to the freaking comic book store they say can say hey i want to know more about comics or i want to know about this character and they go boom here you go, yeah. and it's not going to cost them nineteen ninety nine, yeah, or sixty ninety nine. Those those graphic novels are not enough. Give me a thirty two page treat so that explains mm-hmm. to me who these characters are. That's all they need, you know. And 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 I've got proof that that's what actually happens. And they're just not doing it. They're they're on some mother junk. <clears throat> I, I don't know what they're going for, man. But but you know the uh, switching back quickly to uh oh. Oh, that's why the <laughs> uh, you know the the Doctor Strange and the Multi Universe of Madness. Once again, I liked it, but there is the crappy parts where they they try to tie in the stuff about his his old girlfriend and everything. It was kind of rough, and then they had him go out with her to the yeah. other universe. It wasn't really needed. I don't understand that. Like. I was like, okay, well, then, you know, the whole watch was a big thing. Then they tried mm-hmm. to show, well, you know, now his heart is killed because he went through. I, I, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. You've got a big bad witch out there who's swacking people. I don't care about your freaking ex honeypot. Don't care. Man. <sighs> um, the 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 whole thing with you know Xavier, but the Illuminati, what masterpiece? Great, you got it. Um, the whole thing, there was like the whole Easter eggs about him going through all the different, uh, him and America Chavez going through all the universes. That was amazing. Love that. Um, Mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people are going to love it when it finally hits Disney Plus and they're going to have to slow it down to see what was going on. So for instance, um, 
There was like the whole B thing. So we don't know whether it was allusion to some other B stuff like within the Shi'ar world or it was whether or whether it was the B that stung her to made her open up her powers in the first place. Mm. There's uh Kazar. Kazar that there was a thing with Kazar. Um possibly a thing with Mephisto or some people were talking about Mustafar. Mustafar is a Star Wars thing, which could be interesting. Um, I forget what was the uh, the other ones. Oh, uh, pant. There was, the, it was the pant one. <laughs> the what? There was the pant one where everything was squirrely. Yeah, the pink everything. Yeah, exactly. Which which would be like the kind of like a House of Ideas uh, yeah. third dimension thing where we we just had a comic book where it was Silver Surfer uh, Thanos's. Uh, I don't know if it was it Thanos's mom. There is a silver no, Gal- 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 no Galactus, Galactus mom, um, the mask raider, and all these other girls, and they they had a whole paint weird thing going on. Um, and then there was one, there was another scenario where he was down, they were down under in, in the water, you know, where mm. the submariner lives. Um, the uh, what's oh, and then there was uh, the whole thing with the robots that yeah. people were saying, oh, hey, those are the robots from. You know, uh, Spider Man No Way Home. Like, no, that is not that. Those robots are from. So, maybe three or four years ago, there was a a whole set of comics for Marvel called Generations, right? Yeah, and yeah, in that, um, Iron Man, um, there was a place where Iron Man actually like was structuring like the whole city and everything. And but that Iron Man wasn't Tony Stark. That Iron Man was actually Riri, um, and Riri built that robot. Um, and then later on, um, Tony Stark becomes the Sorcerer Supreme. So that was a whole that was an interesting that thing that I thought was interesting about that. But yeah, man, there's a lot of weird Easter eggs. I love San Remy's influence. I hope he does more stuff with Marvel. Um, it's just that they need to calm down on the, the teary eye stuff because it didn't freaking hit at all. No, no, yeah, no. terrible, <laughs> terrible. Uh, let's see. All right, well, let's do let's take a break and do an ad and then let's get into some comics, my boy. Sounds like a plan. Hit it. DC, keep it DC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the first comic book that I wanted to get into was Marvel Voices Identity Number One. Um, uh-huh. This one is in solidarity with Asian Americans. They decided to put some supposedly Asian American stories in here. Here's the deal. I didn't find. So. <laughs> I have a question dead early on yes, about sir. this book. If you uh on this book, well I liked um well I, my question was on page if we have it if let me just double check. Yeah, on page five of this book. I'm not sure why Professor P- Pig from the DC universe is in this book. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I was like, what's going yeah. on? <laughs> 
uh, they said, "Hey, we got Squid Game going on here, so let's let's do that and put Professor Big in there." And not really. so, you know, like the first story you open up was with Asians killing Asians, like mm. that's a thing. Um, and 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 I'm glad glad you brought that that story because uh, I'll tell you why. So that one is called um, the, the Secrets. Secrets right, um, by yeah. Porn Sack Bistoshi, um and Crisley with Brian Valenza. Um, I'm not let's sure. Not forget, let's forget. Let's not forget Travis Lanham on letters. Letters are important. Letters, yes. <laughs> um, so the the scenario is is that uh, Wu and uh, Shang are fighting um, in a tournament style thing and these millionaires are making bets and they're drinking champagne and everything and the whole big thing is shang chi they know that they can get out at any time but they want to just keep the thing going so they can wait for backup and then Wu just pulls out a freaking gun and he shoots <laughs> shang chi um as you do yeah like yeah that's <laughs> hey that's my best friend let me just pull out this gun real quick and freaking shoot him you know um <sighs> There's there's a whole that that whole let's get this thing is whole just wholly ridiculous like let all right Marvel said all right let's let's go and get ridiculous but what I did understand and what I did appreciate was them at the end um and when they're reconciling it you know the good guys threw up they saved the day and they bring them out and everything and um and then you know they had to reconcile because at some point during their fight you know they start talking trash about each other and everything. Um, and then they just go, hey, um, hey, man, we're good, man. Yeah, we're good, man. Yeah, but yeah, I do yeah. recognize that what you were saying was kind of kind of weird. And, you know, they said, well, you don't know me, man. And the reason why you know, don't know me is because I recognize that when I'm over here in America, I can't just talk the way I would mm. talk to everybody else. For my, because everybody thinks Chinese and Chinese Americans are the same, but we're different. Right. Yeah. Now. Um, and and that goes back to something that's called racial coding, right? That, it's a it's a thing where, mm -hmm. hey, back in the back in the crib, we talk the way we talk and we understand the way we we understand each other. But when we're mm -hmm. out in front of all these other people, we got to kind of behave. So we switch switch the way we behave, and that's that's what they're talking about. That is the most Asian thing that was in this whole book. <laughs> that is it. That is all you need to read. That's it. There's nothing else in this book. There's nothing about you no know, recognition that the the stuff that Asian a lot of Asian Americans talk to that they they love love hearing about their parents and that how much pressure their parents on, or give to them. You know nothing about you know being em, their parents and grandparents being immigrants and all that. None none of that other stuff. No, they got. What, what's the other story? We got, we got Wong. You know, being sad because he's like the the stay-at-home housewife, you know, you yeah. know, for for the sanctum, you know, you got Cameron and Marvel having this weird love thing going on. Yeah, I didn't know. mind. I mean, I, I didn't mind. Sorry to interrupt. I didn't no, mind okay. the uh, the um, what's the name? Oh man, I've I've just been Lewis? looking at the time. Uh, from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, is her name Lotus? Lord, no, it's not Lotus, is it? I forget is what her Lotus? name is. Mantis. Uh, Mantis. Mantis. There, there yes. we go. Yeah, Mantis. I, I quite like the Mantis story. Right up until the point at the end, the script. Well, you know when people, you know when you've got races that talk a different language. You know, like Chewie in Star Wars or Groot, who says "I am Groot" all the time. Yeah. I don't like it when writers have to then write the question in the answer. You know, so Groot says, I am Groot. And then Mantis turns around and says, yes, I know. I have done da, 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 da. I'm like, yeah. You just Ooh. say, yes, I know, and be done with it. You know, I get that they're trying to let us know what Groot's saying, but it's just, no, it's just done in such a cack handed way. It just really annoys me when people do this. Um, other than that, I thought it was a good, for Mantis at least, it, I thought it was a really good way to show, showcase her journey because she interacted with each of her emotional impacts um 
which I thought was kind of. I thought that was is she nice. is she cool. Asian though? I mean, I thought she was like an alien from another. Is she not a Vietnamese prostitute that got turned into a? Is that not how Mantis worked? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm like. Wait, what now? Like... Well, let me. I'm sure. I'm sure there's something like that about Mantis kicking around. Let's. Yeah, I mean, because because uh, because once again, this is this is an Asian Amer Asian American pride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. Yeah, Mantis is half Vietnamese, half German and, daughter. Is, yeah, yeah. Is that what you want to highlight for Asian American pride? Is her stint as I mean, as a Vietnamese prostitute? Is that is that what they're going for? Like, what does Thanos have to do with Asian American heritage? I think it's the impact on her and the fact that the spiritual elements of her inner child that that kind of speaks more of of the kind of elements that you're looking for. Um, Johnny, but... you you should write you should write for Marvel because you made that sound <laughs> like absolutely amazing. But I know for a fact this whole story was trash. <laughs> The story was fucking trash, man. This is fucking <laughs> insulting. This <laughs> don't let anybody from the Asian American heritage fucking cultural thing get a hold of this because they were like, "Wait, what the fuck is? What the hell yeah. is going on? What are y'all doing?" Yeah, you know? it's it, it it's strange. I always when when people do these types of like books, and no matter what what particular um, diversity they're trying to celebrate, I always think. You know what? Sometimes it comes over as heavy-handed. It just shows the ignorance of people more than the actual benefit of what they're trying to promote. And it's like, uh, you know, um, I don't Why know. Do... I, I'll be honest. I, in my in my circle of friends up here in the UK, I don't have a lot of um, Asian friends. It's just the way the neck of the woods that I live in. Um, I'd be interested to see if anybody of Asian origin stroke descent picks up this book and goes wow they totally nailed my culture on that one <laughs> he uh, in the in the story while you were out written by emily kim ricky yag uh, is the artist coloring by sebastian chang um i'm trying to get over you know you got wong who is actually from another country who's actually from another country and the whole storyline is about him at the house you could have, you had Doctor Strange going out. Why didn't you just have Wong go out as well? Yeah. Hey, Wong decides to go take a vacation back to where he come from, and then we could learn more about the Asian history and culture and everything. Nope, we had him buying Girl Scout cookies at the house. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we. This man, this is the saddest Marvel voices ever. With a I don't know with, why this book exists. With a bad, with a very bad. Um... A very bad vampire metaphor thrown in for good measure. Oh my goodness! Garbage, garbage, garbage. I, I like I didn't bring this book up because it was amazing. Because I just wanted to say, hey, Marvel, I appreciate what you're trying to do with these heritage books, but you got to get it right. Make it make sense now. Make yeah. it make sense. Oh, I, I, either that or hire me as your PR. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, 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 there's there's a silk book. The silk book would just ended up a storyline with the witch. It was amazing. I'm buying it was silk amazing. Book. I am it's, actually I'm buying silk. I think I think it's class. I love I love silk. The absolutely they really does go into Korean history. Not necessarily Korean history, but Korean culture, Korean mm. mythology. That was an amazing story. And that story should have been in here. At least part of the story should have been in this freaking book, instead of Wong buying um, Girl Scout cookies, instead of Mantis being a Vietnamese prostitute, uh, instead of two Asian guys playing Squid Game with each other. There's all they just went all types of wrong with this one, and they need to get it straight next time. All right, um, let's go into the next. <laughs> go on, oh, well, you're on the rant now. Oh, Fantastic Four. <laughs> Oh, the only people who are reading this book are us. <laughs> yes. Um, it's... So, so I'll do the credits on this one for it. So it's Dan Slot writing as always, Rachel Stoughton, Andrea DeVito on art, colors Jesus Abertov, and letters by VCs Joe Karamanga. Uh, this cover, the standard cover, I believe, I'm sure Lucas will correct me if I'm wrong, is by Kapu. There you go. Cool. Um, do you think the reckoning was just going on too long? 
Yes, because now people forget that it's even a thing. Yeah. You've I, got three issues to go wow, to make people go wow. In those issues, you've got to have a new character that people care about. That is not happening in this one. You know, is yeah, this a great lead up for any project that they may be doing with Fantastic Four? Maybe, right? Because you got you no know, the Fantastic Four family, you've got Uatu, you got uh, you know, you got all types of stuff going going for it. But it's it's going on for far too long, especially when you got multiple books. Yeah. But don't you think that this book it's a crazy book, there is a lot going on in this issue. But to me, it just seems like one of those issues that stretches the whole thing out. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's moving pieces around. You've got the kids going through the gate. You've got Doom fighting uh, his bad guy seen as uh, on the on the cover there. You've got Reed, Ben, and and She Hulk and Jack of Hearts trapped now. Everyone forgets about the Invisible Woman, and she shows up in this as well when the Watchers are having a bit of a civil war thing going on. There's a lot going on. And I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's too much. It is too much. You got the Guardians of the Galaxy and the Jammers showing up, yeah. and then it's like, okay, we're here, and then they don't show up again to do anything. Yeah. Like, wait, well, no, what? <laughs> it is. It is. You've got to really love your Fantastic Four to do that to to get into this book. I just it frustrates me because it could be so good, especially after the last issue. When we we looked at it and we were like, "Oh, Reed's been a complete uh, douchebag with how he's treating Ben and and how he's manipulating him and all that sort of stuff." We enjoyed that. That was like, "Oh yeah, this is really fun." But then this comes around and you're like, um, "All that good progress is lost, and they're just all friends again." It just it, it frustrates me how hit and miss this book can be. I don't know what to think about. The direction like the it looks like the main point was to go more into the uatu right like the mm -hmm. whole you know, like his whole race and what they're at, what they were up to and everything and say hey there's not just these nexuses there's an apex which is the main nexus like mm -hmm. oh, jesus christ uh i guess that's a thing now right um because for the last two years they, we've been talking about the nexuses so they can show uh set up the multiverse movies is and it, now that is is it the plural of Nexus? Is this is Nex I? <laughs> I have no clue, man. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. I am not going to speculate. I'm not going to speculate on something that doesn't even that only mathematically exists. Uh, you know, I, I'm with you on this, like. Hey, like, hey, hey, you know what? The, hey, hey, the big thing about Nexus is, hey, there's an apex. Like, wait, what, where did this come from? And what's the point of the apex? Oh, yeah, there's this apex, and that's why we built our house around this, you know, so we can live around it now. We are here to protect it and everything. Yeah, do, 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 do. In the meantime, let's switch back to these guys who there's this is one of those there's too much reading when it didn't need to be me. Yeah, right. A shout. Um, look, I don't read if you're throwing Ben Graham at me. I want to see him smack the crap out of somebody. And if you're throwing <laughs> Mr. Fantastic at me, yeah, he gets he gets three panels where he gets to do like, hey, I've got an idea. And then he stretches around. Yeah. Hey, Sue, <laughs> would you mind helping me out with this? And then she helps well, she just pops out of nowhere, right? Um, you know, the kids, they're they're doing their own thing, right? Fit look, the kids are great. The kids do what they're going to do. They curiously say, Hey, we're kids. Let's just do some stuff we're not supposed to do and just go through this magic gate. You know, that, that's them, right? Yeah, I, totally. the, the, the other two kids, the alien kids, they're knowing what they're supposed to do. They're just yeah. biting, smashing. I love that, right? And all, and all that stuff that's happening, I don't need the Guardians of the Galaxy to show up and do nothing. I don't need the Jammers to show up and do nothing. <laughs> all right? <laughs> <laughs> what are we what are we doing here? Because now we just go shout, shout a whole bunch of words at me, and then you got the bad guys. The bad guys are talking too much, right? Mm. Bad guys need to show up, smash some flowers, kick some babies, you know, freaking, <clears throat> you know, you know, grab the dog's bone away from the dog, <gasps> and, then freaking, and then say, ha, 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 throw, throw the mustache, and then you know, say, you never catch me, and then freaking go away, and yes. then the whole rest of the thing should be them going. 
you know, and then, you know, just trying to explain the weapons and stuff. Like, I, we, you explained the weapons to us in, like, the first, the first issue. I don't need another explanation um, of that. Uh, you feel it, passionate about this, don't you? <laughs> it, it, it is, because, the, look, I love, once again, this is one of those ideas what, that was, in theory, should have been amazing. This should have been a great Fantastic Four freaking story. But it's, 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 and then you, look, you threw Dr. Doom in there. The Doom right? bits were the best bit. Right? Okay, let's, let's f- take out the other Watu and villain stuff. Let's do, hey, fan- there's what the Fantastic Four is doing. In the meantime, here's Dr. Doom over there, or give Dr. Doom his own Wrecking War book. And let that mm. let that be a thing, right? Yeah, that, um, you know that, that makes more sense. Definitely, I agree with you on that one. There's there's just too much going on, and uh, like Dan Slot, man, freaking c- calm down. I know, I know you had a whole bunch of ideas, but you need to calm down, man. Freaking, my, you just do too much at it, and and it got got all freaking garbled. Um, mm. And I don't know what to do with this book now. It's like, okay, there is a whole bunch of people that showed up, and I don't know what they're doing, or and nor do I care anymore. You know, <laughs> <sighs> I don't know if you felt the same way. I don't know how you felt. Um, That's the way I felt. As I say, I think this book's lost traction. I think, I think there's a lot. I think the I think the car idea is pretty sound, but there's a lot of distractions around that. Um, I don't care whether Jack of Hearts lives or dies, to be fair. Um, right. I'm all right with that either way. Um, you know that it's going to big brain his way out of it somewhere along the line. Yeah. Um, I think the main part is they're trying to shoot everybody or shoot Jack of Hearts. He's going to show up in the MCU somehow. Yeah. Um, don't know why. Yeah. Don't know why. Yeah, I don't know either. But no, he's he's shown up in a whole bunch of books so far. So they got to put him in there somehow. So we'll see. Yeah. The. Um, I liked seeing Sue Richards, ironically, because I think Sue gets a bit of a bum deal. She's always she's always the forgotten character in the Fantastic Four, um, so I'm glad she's I'm glad she's in this. But uh, as always, now you see, now you don't. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, uh, last book that we're going to talk about is Han Solo and Chewbacca. Oh um, yes. So for well, context of where I'm coming to be coming from on this one, there was like a one in twenty five by Adam Hughes. It's terrible. Nobody cares about this book. You can actually find that once again, it's a one in twenty five book that you can find on eBay for five bucks right now. All right, okay. Hold um, on, let me have a look. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Got the old trusty phone. Let's go for it. Yes, sir. Uh written by Mark Guggenheim. Art by Dave Messina, color by Alex Sinclair, letters by Joel Caramanga, cover art Phil Noto, and once again, variant cover art by Adam Hughes, Arthur Adams, and Federico Blee. Um, look, the main, let's get to it. The main thing about this was a, this is a reuni- reunion in between and first appearance of Han Solo's dad, Ovan Solo, right? Um, no, he, Meets up with them, and then they go on a, a what's it, what's, what's the name of that movie that they're always doing heists and robberies on? Ocean, like, Ocean Elevens. Right, yeah, this is Ocean Elevens, but with like with father and you know father and son type of freaking moment. Mm-hmm. And that's all I can see. That's that's all this is, man. That's all there is. There's nothing else to this book, right? Um, the come on, try it. <laughs> it's the it's Star Wars. It's is it Han it's, Solo? It's Chewbacca. Is it, it look? It's clean, right? I'll, I'll give it that. It's clean. Would I like to see more of this? It all depends, man. It's it's not bad. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take anything away from it. You know the stuff of uh, the stuff behind the scenes of hey, um, the dude talking to uh, Jabba's you know underling to figure out what's going on with Han Solo, where he's at. That's interesting, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the problem right now is is that this is before all that stuff where everybody was just looking for Han Solo's body, right? Mm. Just, just so, we just we yeah, we just came out of the bounty hunter freaking deal where everybody you know his body frozen and was getting traded around from galaxy to galaxy. Um, 
So I, I I don't get why they put this at this time, but so this is set clean. between this is set between um, Revenge of the Sith and New Hope, and after and obviously after um, the Solo movie, right? Okay, because Greedo's okay. in it. Okay. Greedo's in it, so that he hasn't shot Greedo yet. So okay. it must be must be before Star Wars and New Hope. Um, <clears throat> I think Marvel have missed a trick with Han Solo and Chewbacca. I think. A lot of a lot of times people whinge at me and say Star Wars, Star Wars movies and product now is it's not for me, it's not aimed at me, and it's terrible because of it. And what I have to tell these people is that dude, you're like 40 now, you're 40, 50. Star Wars was always a kid's movie. All right. Mm. So we saw it when I was like I saw it in the 70s, the first time around. So you know. Um for me. Marvel have missed a trick because with Solo and Chewbacca, you could have made this more adult. The, the, the smugglers, for Christ's sakes, the, the run with crime lords. You, right. not, ev- not every story has to have a Disney ending. You know, <clears throat> Let's see some of the underbelly of the, of the universe. Let's see some of the, the backhand deals. Let's see some of the real dangers that are in there. Instead, mm. we get a Disney-friendly dad's son storyline and i'm me and you're you and all this and to be fair how he hasn't shot greedo already is beyond me because the dude's an idiot (laughs) (coughs) i mean greedo is so bad at everything he does if he fell down i think he'd miss the ground (laughs) (laughs) oh man but yeah but the you look at it, it and the artist, I want to give a shout out to the artist, uh, David Messina. When you do when you do a, a tie-in book like uh, Solo Chewbacca or any of the other type, type of tie-in books that exist across the wide range of publishers, the key point is you've got to make the characters look like the characters. And for large parts of that, he absolutely, yes. totally does. So if you're a fan of Han Solo and Chewbacca, you're going to pick up a book, it's going to read like a kid's book, but it's going mm. to look like the characters that you recognize. So that's a good thing. Mm. Yeah. There you go. Man, look, I don't, I don't know what else to say about this book, man. It's just like, I just don't know. I think the the, the thing that kind of throws me off is like the timing once again. Mm. Like, okay, instead of giving us more, I, I would prefer a hand solo. If you're going to do a hand solo at Chewbacca and you're going to bring up the sun, give me more about Ben. Hmm. What the hell happened with Ben? Mm-hmm. No, um, because how did how did they lose the Falcon? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was that was a whole big thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you know, there, there's some things that they could have did better with this, and they should just re- revamp this or just yeah. let's let's c- shut it down. Give me well, one more. Give me well, one more and shut it down. Well, look. Look how good the old Republic started out, the comic book. Everybody was loving that. Right? And that's 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 semi serious in lots of places. Why can't we have one like, you know, you know, the someone I mean the guy you like who's blackmailing Bib Fortuna, that's what he's doing, he's blackmailing and Bib Fortuna's are like, Oh yes, oh okay. <laughs> no no vehemence, no anger, no real emotion. You know, it's just oh man. It's just kids. But you know what? It's been a poor week this week. I don't think there's been a... Unless you count all the X stuff that came out. I don't think mm. there's been much much for Marvel. But Cool. There you go. Buy it if you really love Han Solo and Chewbacca. If you really love, really love Han Solo and Chewbacca, you might not want to miss it out because there's not much. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, getting ready it's, to... It's a two-minute warning. Come on. Yeah, two more. Yes, sir. I just want to hide some slides that might get us shut down. Oh, okay, then. <laughs> nope. You All mean, right. Be- you mean Betty Page isn't on a on a Marvel book? <laughs> <laughs> uh, quick, hey, freaking uh, keep an eye out on a Disney stock. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, high has been like 150 bucks. Now it's down 102. I'm saying when it gets down to late 90s, Go ahead and freaking jump on it. Uh, duh, 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 you know, 
In fact, hey, here's a dot matrix of stuff that of uh, characters that have been show, seen showing up a lot lately. Uh, Warbur Warburg, her first appearance was in History of the Marvel Universe. Nighthawk, Avengers number 69, and Cameron. Warburg, which Warburg is that? Uh, it's the she is the daughter of um, a Jabari Wakandian guy, and I forget the name of her mother. Oh, something okay, like cool. that, right? right uh, cool. First appearances: Eternity, Staff, Star Wars, Doctor Aphra number two, Celestial, Hawkbuster, and Thor number twenty-five. Uvan Solo, we just talked about that. It had its own Chewbacca number one. The Little Goblin, New Mutants number twenty-five. That one was interesting, um, especially because there was a one in one hundred by Art Germ that people loved. They tore into it this week. Mm -hmm. um, Aleph uh, from Wolverine patch number two, excellent number three. It's like eh. But there are some crazy characters in there, fluff stripe and contrails, and a cerebrax from X Force number twenty eight. That's a mixture of cerebo and a whole bunch of bunch of different freaking mutants. Cool. All right, on F O C this week. Look at that. Yes, sir. Phil Noto does it again uh, for Immortal X Men. Um, unfortunately, there's a second print sketch variant, uh, one to 25 for Thor, Banner of War, Alpha number one. I do like it. I just don't like the fact that it's a one to 25. Um, Roz Morales, Moon Girl, number one. This one's a one to 25 by Randolph. Uh, there's an action figure for Iron Man. Uh, it's called, called the Marvel Medieval, Medieval Knight. Mm. Uh, for those that like, uh, to have little readers. Um, you know, new readers. There is a Marvel Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, Little Goat and Book. Uh, the Marvel Amazing Spider Man number one to twenty five by Vasquez. That book's amazing. I really like that book. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say it. Looking forward to number two. Yes, sir. Uh, Immortal X Men number three by this one is by author Adams. As if you can't tell, Shades of uh, X Men versus the Asgardian War from back in the day. Sir, uh, this one is the one in 25 by Momoko, absolutely terrible, but Momoko has her fans. Um, then Maestro World War number four, this mm. one is a one of 10. No, I don't think I paid 10 bucks for that. Like, and Star Wars comes in number five, 125 by Sabak. Um, so for those that don't know, speculators have been all over these Raza Knights variants. This one right here has a combination of every single one of those that's on there. That's what those cards are. Well, the Sabak cards, that's what the, the deal is, right? Sabak's the card game by which Solo wins the Millennium Falcon from Lanzo Calrissian. Really? Did I know yeah, yeah. Sabak's a, it's a card game. It's like poker. So. And this one is the last of the issue, Star Wars Crimson Right Raza variant. It's all right. Yes, sir. So people, number two, issue number two is hard to get. I don't know what's going to be going on with number five, but I'm going to be ordering me quite a few copies. And then this one is the 150 by Cummings. Yeah, big bar, isn't it? So am I going to order 50 copies of this to get to this? I don't think so. No. Uh, this one is the I. This one is uh, Venom Lethal Protector number three. The Hoth, or as speculators call it, the Venom Bukaki. Uh, variant, <laughs> yeah, that will get shut down. <laughs> yeah, I don't... <laughs> don't Google I don't that, know. kids. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this one is the Mice World War M. Uh, Momoko. I quite like that one, it's amazing, right? Yeah, yeah I like the, like the whole like baby thing. Yeah, it's spot on. Uh, Miles Morales, Spider Man number 39 by Torin Clark. Star Wars Mandalorian's got quite a few issues, and uh. Mm. It's a pick your adventure when it comes to some of these. Here's the action figure variant. This one is the one in 50. That is the way. By you. <laughs> by me? I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one's the photo variant. And I believe this one is a one in 10. All right, girls. Oh, quite like that one. That one's old school, that one. Who's this? I don't have it off the top of my head. Oh, man, that, that's a bum. Let's see if I can. Uh, Javier. Oh, yeah, like... there you go. I like that lot. Uh, oh. uh, Miles Morales, Spider Man number 39, the Medina. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is a Dodderman Hellfire Gallivering with Black Widow. 
Either you love it or you hate it. That's hate just it. the way it is. <laughs> uh, choose Your Destiny by Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, there's some new characters in the Obi-Wan number, issue number two. See, this one look is at, the Pride variant. Yep. Look at yeah. the characters like that. It makes me think, no, I'm not going to be reading that. No. <laughs> Uh, this is the one you want. Uh, X Men number twelve, Pride Variant by Luciano Vecchio. Uh, then X Men number twelve has a Inchuk Lee Hellfire Gala variant. Mm. Looks like uh, Cyclops is dressing or cosplaying as Obi Wan. What my question on this? You know the Hellfire badge in the top there, in the top right. Does that not mm. look like the Starship Enterprise? It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Someone, someone getting the suit on. <laughs> well, I mean, eh, we'll, we'll see. Paramount has to make enough money off of Star Trek for anybody to care. Um, Big Spider Man number six by Bengal. I like that. I like the fact you've got the uh, Spider Woman there, the second uh, Spider Woman whose name has forgot. Um, Arachne, what's her name? Julia Carpenter. Yeah, yeah. I like Julia Carpenter, Spider Woman, definitely. Uh, the Cassidy variant, got mm. the Sinister Six. Some people, it's, this one's a uh, love it or hate it. I can, I can quite hate it. Join me there. Go on, one son. and one hundred. Whoa, yes. come on, Marvel, get it together. Um, yeah, that this one is well. a right, was... Sue variant, and this one's open order. Uh, one to 25 by Tedesco. Hmm. Up and comer, Maria Wolf. Nah, pass. Scotty Young. Hmm. Uh, Knights of X number three by Mercado or Miguel Mercado. Okay. Uh, X Men number twelve one twenty five by Arthur Adams. Really? That's Arthur Adams. That face looks bonkers. Rogue's face just looks wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Uh, Star Wars The Mandalorian, another Pride variant. Uh, Punisher War Journal Blitz, 125 by Torrin Clark. See, you said Blitz, but I read Butts there. I'm sorry, say again now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It says Butts. <laughs> and don't forget to pick up your lunchbox. That's sick. Ghost Rider lunchbox. That is that the is... bomb. Where can I get the Ghost Rider lunchbox from? Uh, you can tell your local comic book shop to uh, pick one up for you. Okay. Or actually, the if you let us know, if you let Comic Crusaders know, we can maybe order it for you. Um, hook you up somehow, mm. some way. Um, but, you know, you do what you got to do. Yeah. Uh, and, and, that, and that's all I got man uh oh 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 i forgot this one oh forgot this one one last one ooh, this one nice. is yes sir amazing spider-man number six one and five hundred it's not worth five hundred dollars but it's very nice no it's a thousand dollars because thousand dollars yeah because it's half the price it's half the price of the book times 500 so this okay. so, so this book is 399 you take two dollars off of that, and then you times that by five hundred. That's how much retailers have to um, buy this book for. Well, I'll just order that many copies of the original, right? So. Jeez, <laughs> very impressive. Okay, cool. Sure. There you go. All right, uh, that's all I got. You got anything, Johnny? No, I'm all good. Um, I hope the professor's having a good time on his vacay. Um, he'll be back next time around to give us grief. Uh, this is nice, Fantastic Four. It's all right because we're going to diss on Avengers next time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I don't even know if there's any TV series or movies coming out in the meantime. Uh, Obi Wan, Obi Wan's out uh, this week. Is it this week? Is it already yeah. out? Or yeah, or where, where, out? well, this is Tuesday. It comes okay, out on the twenty yeah, seventh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so okay. you know what I'm saying. That's Friday. That's Tuesday, Wednesday. Three days. Three days. All right. Well, if it's good, you'll see me in full Star Wars garb, um, decked out. If it's not, then you're just going to see me in my sweatpants. Well, I think next time no. around, I'm going to wear my Obi Wan bathrobe just to just 
Just I have got the beard <laughs> as well. Excellent. And I'm British. I've got this. I can you do my own. Yeah. Down, I am. I am. <laughs> the, uh, next episode. That is me all over. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, so he you heard it here his... first. Johnny but... the Machine Hughes says he's going to cosplay as a Jedi but... Knight. <laughs> you know, but he must. He must begin his training. No, that's wrong. <laughs> I uh, loved never... you like a brother. You were meant to bring balance to the force, not destroy it. <laughs> oh well, that's man. no, Lucas. I, I am not. I no, I am not going to watch <laughs> all the new Star Wars movies over again. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to yeah, leave that you alone. Are. Yeah, yeah. Look at no. that little face. Yeah, yeah. Uh... No, because I've already <laughs> promised everybody that I would go back back and watch Batman eighty nine. Uh, nah, Mike Michael Keatman join again. I know which one it is. No, yeah. no, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star. Wars. <laughs> Hold on. Nah, that's... These are the movies you'll be watching. <laughs> My Little Pony. What? <laughs> <laughs> on that note. <laughs> on on that note, let me. Let me... I'm going to bring up my my. Even though it is not Marvel related, I'm going to bring up my favorite cover. That's one FOC this week. This one. This one's called The New Testament Presents the Bible 2. Hail to the King of the Jews. And it's Jesus Christ riding a unicorn, a rainbow unicorn, shooting two automatic assault weapons. And he has laser beams coming coming out of his eyes. Marvel, if you don't pick up this story, I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying, oh that's God. that's the type of stuff I want to see. Uh, Make it happen. Nope. <laughs> All right, that's it for No Prize Podcast. Have fun, keep reading, and stay safe. Adios. Bye.